welcome in to another insightful, enlightening, and hilarious episode of the Young Dad Podcast. After many, many technical difficulties tonight, I'm Jay, and with me, as always, is my handsome co-host and brother, Aaron. Hey, Aaron, say what's up to the people. What up? Today, we got a fantastic episode for the people, for you beautiful listeners out there, because I'm sure you're all beautiful, which, by the way, thank you to the beautiful, beautiful listeners for listening today and being here with us. Make sure to like, share, follow, leave five stars, and all that jazz. Today on the show, we have embarrassing stories from middle and high school, active listening, distractions, and some hilarious, per your take on comedy, dad jokes to close us out. So grab a juice box, grab a snack, and let's talk. Before we get into our final segment here, I want to thank our other amazing partner of the podcast, the coldest, the coldest water, coldest dog bowl coldest pillow, the coldest ice pack, the coldest brand itself literally has been the number one in many magazines, many polls for about five years now when it comes to their products and their water bottles. They seriously are the best. I've had Yeti. I've had Hydro Flask. I've had the coldest. Guess which one I still use? The coldest. Not just because obvious reasons but because they're literally the best my yeti my hydro flask sit up in my cabinet my coldest water is literally on my desk right now and i'm drinking from it my ice stays icy i kept this thing in my car on 110 degree days here in tri-cities in washington eastern washington my ice is still there at the end of the day my water is still cold i kept it outside same heat still cold throughout the day i've done that to my yeti my hydro flask, my water is warm, my ice is gone, my ice is still there, my coldest. Dog bowls, ice packs, pillows, gallon water bottles, they're all amazing. You can save 10% on everything. Use the code BALLBOY10 at thecoldestwater.com. Save yourself money, get you a water bottle you'll never look back on and not love. And you'll be like, man, I wish this thing kept my water bottle. My drink's cold for more than six months. Go get it now. Coldestwater.com. Ballboy10 at checkout. Thank us later. And a special thank you to our live studio audience that is always here with us. And they are fantastic. We love them. All right, let's get into one of life's greatest questions that I'm sure the listeners have wondered all about. What were these two like in middle school? By these two, it would be you and me. What were we like in middle and high school? So we're going to share an awkward slash embarrassing slash a moment we don't really want too public, but we're going to make it public anyway. Um, Awkward middle high school stories. Aaron, you're going first. Give me an awkward, embarrassing, very deep story from middle school. Yeah, man. I don't know about deep, but um, it's got I I uh, I briefly remember. I don't. I'm not sure how I ended up there, but I was in the cafeteria getting lunch, and the cafeteria is packed. And I walk in, I get my lunch, and it, they served it on trays. I grab the tray, pick up the tray, I start walking, slip, and everything falls all over me. And I feel like the whole cafeteria just stopped. And it just, it was super quiet. Everyone just started laughing. Like the way in like TV shows when that happens? Yeah, but oh, this was no. a whole lot different because <laughs> just all the embarrassment. Did it feel like it happened in slow motion? Mm, not in slow motion, but it just felt like it lasted forever. It probably did. Probably did. For me, I got into a fight one time in middle school. Well, I got into a few fights in middle school. But this one, I remember for some reason. But basically what would happen is I had this girlfriend, right? Her name was... K, because I'm not going to say her whole name. Her name was K. Middle school girlfriend, first love, 
you know, middle school thought I was going to marry her. Didn't end up marrying her, obviously. But this one guy, he was talking crap about it. He was, like, in our friend group, and he always, like, made fun of everyone because he was that kid who always made fun of everyone, thought he was, like, the coolest coolest thing since sliced bread. His name was Andre. I'll out him right now. And he was talking crap about Kay. Kay. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? Like, stop. Like, stop saying that about her. She was having, like, a really tough day, like, bad morning, bad couple days. And I told him to stop and shut up or I was going to make him shut up. And he's like, oh, no, you're not. And he kept going. Then he said one more thing. Gave him a good old left hook right to the side of his face. I got sent home for the rest of the day. I got suspended for three days. And I was basically all anyone talked about after that all year. No one messed with me or my girlfriend anymore after that. So Certified badass. Basically. All right. For high school. Aaron, give me some high school, something embarrassing or awkward from high school. Uh, so I was on the phone with uh, one of my buddies, and <laughs> he had me on speaker in front of the whole class. He's in class, and I may or may not have been talking about someone that I liked in that class. <laughs> she may or may not have heard me, and it may or may not have ruined whatever chance that I had at talking to her. But yeah, it's it's one of those. Gosh, dude, that's rough. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it spread pretty quickly. I can only imagine that it spread like wildfire. Yeah. It seems like everything back then, and whenever you had anyone that you had a crush on or liked or were slightly interested in, as soon as you told one person, like everyone knew like the next day. Oh, yeah. And I was just, I, I mean, it may not have changed anything. I just was probably way too embarrassed to ever approach that chick ever again. Oh, 100%. 100%. For me in high school, something embarrassing for me is for so senior prom and it being almost 10 years, coming up on 10 years since I graduated high school this next summer. I took a trip down my senior year memory lane. And, you know, I was pretty cool in high school. I had a lot of friends. I was, you know, kind of friends with everyone all over the place, but senior year i remember specifically getting my promposal rejected not once but twice by two different girls by julia and maddie i'm gonna out them too julia was on the (laughs) cheerleading team um great girl really really cool I had the biggest crush on her. And so for hers, what did I do? Um, I can't remember what I did for her from Pulitzer, but it was like a little bit extravagant. And she said, no. I was like, really? I'm like, whatever. That's fine. We were in ASB together. I think I did it during like ASB or something. Like I had it planned. And yeah, so, and then the second girl, Maddie, her, she was um, our school president. I was senior class president, so we were in leadership together. And I had asked her, I had made this sign for one of them. I think it was Maddie. I made this sign that said, will you go to prom with the sweetest guy in town? And it was like the border was candy bars. Oh, super cheesy. Super cheesy, but like promposal what you're supposed to do also you're 16 so well senior year i'm 17 okay 17 no 18 because i turned 18 before the end of the school year and so i'm like okay this is going to be a yes for sure and also no for some context i had a long distance girlfriend in washington this is when i lived in california but she was okay with it because she ended up uh, we'll get, I'll get there. But Maddie also said no, even after that promposal. So I was like down and defeated. So then my long distance girlfriend ended up 
flying down to California and we ended up going to prom together with a group that included it included either Maddie or Julia and I could I can't remember who now because it was many many years many many moons ago but yeah so got rejected for senior prom twice so that was pretty solid yeah dude, that's so was it like a big uh promposal like in front of a lot of people or the first one was well maybe not a lot of people i would say the first one was probably just i think that one was in front of just like our leadership class so maybe like 10 15 people yeah and the second one was like just like maddie and like maybe two other people so that one was like less embarrassing but also felt more embarrassing because i'm pretty sure i put more effort into that sign and that those candy bars than i did the first one i don't remember what i did for the first one i think i just like straight up asked her to prom well look at him now who's laughing now i'm, I'm really kidding. not i'm, I'm really not kidding. sure who's laughing at this point so we're gonna see next, we're gonna i don't see think anyone's laughing opinion. i think i think we're all in pain we we all, all, all are in deep deep pain here but that's okay we're gonna get out of this pain and we're gonna jump into some active listening discussion right after this Aaron did you know that our live studio audience has a world record for like the longest chair they, I would believe it because we have the best live studio audience. We do. They can cheer with the best of them. So it's time for some wellness, don't you think? There's always time for wellness. Always. Always. That's the best attitude. So for some context for active listening, from Dr. Diane Grande from Psychology Today said the following on active listening in a 2020 article. So when active listening was so important during the pandemic. Active listening is a way of listening that involves full attention to what is being said for the primary purpose of understanding the speaker. It is an important skill set for many different circumstances, ranging from the therapist's office to the business world. If we are not listening actively, we are likely to miss the real message. Speaking of active listening, while we were trying to plan this, I had my two-year-old, almost two-year-old, playing a baby shark fishing game in the background that made me ask you 80 times on repeat what you were saying. I don't remember what you were saying while we were planning this, but I just know I had to ask you like 80 times. I was not active listening. So let's get into it. Let's talk about some of the pros and cons of active listening, how it affects relationships, how it can make you a better listener, and just your thoughts on active listening. Our thoughts on active listening. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean... It's it has a huge a huge effect on on a conversation and uh, like your relationship with anyone really. It could be your spouse, your kid, your coworker. Like if you're just not engaging with someone, or at least making an effort to, they're always gonna feel like, oh, I don't even want to talk to this guy. He doesn't even listen to me when I talk. No, I agree. And especially for both of us, when we think of the business world for us, we're both in leadership positions at our jobs. And so we actually do have to listen to what our crews and what our people are saying to us. Because for me, most of the time I found that when I'm talking to an employee of mine, they're more than likely telling me what's wrong or what's going on or what's bad when they're talking to me it's just up to me to listen because not yeah everyone exactly says what they mean or how they phrase it you really have to pay attention to what they're saying also too i feel like it's huge it's you have to get everyone's perspective and you can't do that without listening first you can't especially in work especially if you're a manager or in any type of leadership position you have to get if there's three people involved, you need to get all three sides of the story. And yeah. you need to listen to each each side of the story. You need to give them each their time and their space to, to say what they what's on their mind, what they their perspective of it. 
you know, we talked about perspective throughout our episode so far. And even when it's between your kids, you have to get both perspectives. Granted, only one of our, both of our kids can really talk. And yeah. have a pretty accurate perspective of what's going on. Yeah, but you know what? I feel like also uh, there was a point in time where my daughter would always exclude my younger daughter just because she couldn't really communicate. And I noticed that had an effect on my younger daughter. And so uh, we really emphasized it and, and made it a point to always include her. And even if she's babbling, like just to give it an ear, you know, that that's listening and it's helped a lot. Like she's really, she's really starting to grow and, and just that, that structure of talk and listen is, is huge, especially to a young child like that. Yeah, no, I agree. I do the same thing with our, with my younger one where it's, yeah, it's babbling or it's the same five words that she does know, but it's still giving her a chance to at least talk and to be heard and not be quiet a lot of the times when they are that age it's super easy to 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 almost ignore them or to kind of put them aside yeah really paying them too much mind Um, yeah and and that's that's an attitude that's had by you know i i think a lot of people it's like oh you know they're babies or they're just babbling but it's like once that's how they 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 start off learning the structure and then Mm-hmm. They they grow their their vocabulary and then it, they just plug it into what they already know. And so it's like if you exclude them, they're kind of behind the ball. Exactly. And you can even take that and apply it to more contexts that are almost similar where you have a boss and a employee or you have a coach and a athlete or you have a teacher and a student or – Really, anyone where you have a is it a male, female, or older, younger dynamic, where some people feel that they're of the higher and the other person's of the lesser, and so they don't listen. They don't actively listen to what they feel is the lesser is really saying, and it can be really bad when you take those assumptions into the conversation before it even gets going over because at that point it's already dead in my opinion if you're taking those assumptions into the or those biases into the conversation yeah no i definitely have experienced that throughout my career uh going from just being a regular crew member to like an actual like lead of a crew um there's plenty of people i've worked for that just had a stone ear and would not hear anything you had to say and it's like everyone dreaded coming to work. Everyone knew that it was going to be a negative atmosphere. And so now that's affected me. And, you know, going having gone through that, I, I don't want to put anyone else through that. You know what I mean? It's I'm never too high to, to listen to what my guys have to say. Exactly. Exactly. And it, it really goes back to that, that part of that article I wrote from uh, Dr. Grande if we're not act listening actively, we're likely to miss the real message. Mm, and we're yeah. never we're never too good. And so I'm sure the listeners are wondering how they can be more of an active listener. So I'm gonna give them some tips on how they can be more active listeners. So the first, listen without judgment. What say yes yes, no? Do you think so? Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's that's a big one. Allow the speaker to finish thoughts without interruption. Yes, even though this one this one's a hard one for me because I I find that I always like interrupt while people are speaking because I know for sure I'll forget the thought that I have that's on my mind. So I feel like I have to get it out, but I've recently tried to stop doing that. Fair enough, and that's something that just has to be practiced over time. I'm the same way. I'll forget what I'm saying or what I want to say as someone's talking and I'm listening and then I forget my response. But sometimes it's better to have forgotten your response and to just listen. Yeah. Show that your attention is focused. Yeah, no, that's a big one. You got to let the person speaking know that you're engaging with them. 
Yep, and you can do that by repeating what you heard to check for accuracy. A lot of time this is really effective when you're talking to your kids or you're talking to, you know, someone you work with just to make sure that you heard what they said and that shows that you were paying attention. Mm -hmm. Ask questions as needed when you don't understand what the speaker is trying to communicate. Which for me, I feel is important to use that one effectively. Don't overuse it because if you're asking too many obvious questions, then obviously you obviously you weren't paying attention. But if you're asking questions for clarity, you're repeating what you said. You say, okay, you said this, but I need to know the meaning on what you, what you mean by that. So asking those more clarifying questions to show you're listening. And then two more, well, one more for sure, and then I have an optional one. Give a short summary to indicate that you've heard and understood what was said. So basically more of the repeating back what you heard, but and also at the same time is giving validation with that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, I, I get what you're, you're saying. Um, although I, I find that most people don't like to do it, I feel like it helps me a lot because I feel like when I'm speaking to someone and they're listening that way and then they give me their perspective of what they heard me convey to them, it helps me better understand how I need to speak to that person or like how I – can get that person to understand me better. Yep, or how they understood what you said, so then you can clarify. And then optionally, as the final step, and no sooner, you may choose to share similar situations that you have experienced or your own views about the issue, if it's appropriate. Even if that is different, that it, that you know, that opinion or your view on the issue, even if that is different, as long as you understood what was communicated to you. So as long as you validated that other person, I feel it's totally appropriate if you're having a mature conversation that both of you have actually engaged in, it's totally appropriate to share opposing views if they are there. Yeah. So, and then lastly, how do you get teach your kids to be active listeners? Um, for me, it's just been listening to them. I mean, I know at times I can be distracted and my wife as well, but um, just showing them that you, you listen to them and what they're saying and that they're important. I mean, that itself is, is a, a, a teacher because um, when they're speaking and someone's listening, you know, they want, they in turn want to do the same thing. Agreed. And for me, I I think it comes down to just basic things like eye contact, um, encouraging them to ask questions on what they heard to make sure mm -hmm. that they understand. Um, work on limiting interruptions. So if you're talking to them and they're doing something with their hands, make sure they put down what they're doing. And that's to make sure that we're communicating clearly to our children so that they can learn what clear communication sounds like. Pretty much practice what good looks like. And then playing listening games, of course, is a great way to engage them as well. Hmm, yeah. No, I, um, my daughter actually, um, she actually taught me a cool one that she does with her teacher. And so uh, they have a certain cue. It'll be like the cue for the week, but it'll be like a snap or a clap. And like the teacher will do the cue and the kids will will um, show her that they're active listening. And so for one week, it might be like clapping their hands back or uh, they'll say like a certain phrase. And it's it's pretty cool. Like my daughter really, really likes it. She likes to engage in that activity quite a bit. Dude, I remember those back in elementary school where it would go from like one, two, three, eyes on me and four, five, six, eyes on you or something like that. Yeah, yeah, she's it's it's pretty cool because her teacher that she has now, uh, they find really creative ways for them to engage. And I noticed that uh, my daughter has really grown in that uh, like in that area of herself. Like she she has learned to not only talk but like listen. Mm -hmm. So she gets her point across and also 
is focused on actively listening and trying to understand what somebody else is saying. I love that. That's great. And that teacher should get a medal of honor because it's a long school year. Yeah, dude. She's, so, uh, she's, she's done a good job. That's awesome. Teachers are the best. Any last thoughts on active listening? Uh, 100% needed. There's no way around it. I don't think you can be successful as a person or as a parent without this tool. I 100% agree. And I think as part of active listening, the most important part is listening without judgment and listening with empathy as well. So without judgment and with empathy to make sure that you're actually showing that you care about what the other person is saying and that you're open minded to what they're saying and kind mm. of checking your biases and your ego at the door for when you're going to have one of those conversations that you need to be more engaged in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's huge. All right. Well, that wraps us up on active listening. So I hope listeners, I hope that you guys are active listening. Studio audience, were you guys actively listening? That leads us into talking about distractions right after this. The audience is having a good time. We're having a good time. Quiet down out there, guys. Quiet down. Quiet down. It's okay. It's okay. Obviously, they got distracted with something out there. So let's talk about something for the people out there, shall we? Let's do it. Usually right about here, we talk about something for the parents or for the people. Unlike me, more like yourself, that are in relationships of some kind. However... Today, we got something for everyone, so no one feels excluded like I usually do when we talk about relationship stuff. As we continue to get distracted, we're going to talk about all types of distractions. Honestly, I'm one of the worst people when it comes to distractions. You know this firsthand that we'll be talking on the phone about something, and I will just check out momentarily because I got distracted with something. Or I'll go from doing one thing over to the next thing, back to the third thing, back to the seventh thing I was doing. All the time. It's my Achilles heel. I blame it on ADD. But in all seriousness, I get distracted probably more than the average human. Which I will find a statistic on that. Yeah, dude. There's a reason why I have you saved. Um, your picture on my phone is Doug from Up. It's because it's... <laughs> Every time I say squirrel, I know you've, you're you looking. I, I do you're looking to see where one's at. I have a lot of browsers, a lot of like windows open on my computer when I'm trying to focus and do my homework. I'll have like my fantasy football open. I'll have something about sea turtles open. And I'll have something about baseball open. Yeah, I'm all over the place. It's bad. Also, for the people that didn't know out there, Aaron and I are both in a fantasy football league um, that we've been in for, what, three, four years now? Uh, yeah, it's going on four years now. It was like a long time. And uh, I'm the reigning champion in that league. <laughs> oh, let's just, don't don't forget to mention you're also the commissioner, so you, nope. you may have been pulling some strings behind the scenes. You didn't have to say all that. Anyways, <laughs> the, the negative side... Or the real side of distractions, and tell 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 us a little bit about that. Tell us about the dark side of distractions. <laughs> um, not so much dark, but um, just like yourself, I I deal with um ADD, and it's just uh for me, I find it it's whatever my interest is in at the moment. So if I'm interested in what I'm doing, I'm gonna be a hundred percent like hyper focused in what I'm doing, but if I'm doing something and I'm not really all there, like I'm not really interested in it, I'm, I could be distracted by, you know, a pin drop. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what it is, but for me, it's all about engagement. I agree. And there, there definitely is a negative side when it comes to distractions. It takes you out of the moment. It takes you just, out of the moment that's the biggest thing and 
we usually let ourselves get distraction. Get, get distractions. Yeah, I'm going to stick with them or roll with it. And so kind of looking at it, what are some of the problems for you when it comes to distractions? Like what kind of problems have this distractions? We're just using that word as kind of a blanket term right now. But what kind of problems can it cause or has it caused? What was that? I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, of course you weren't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, I, it's, I mean, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Um, you know, if, if someone's talking to you and trying to engage with you and you're distracted on something else, it could make them feel like they don't really want to talk to you or that they're not important to you when they're talking to you. Also, um, if you're doing something that's requires your full attention and you're not giving it to them, it could be, it could be dangerous, could end you up in a bad situation. Like you hurting yourself or doing something that you didn't want to do, didn't want the outcome. That's true. I mean, you could be, get distracted and then run into a wall. Yeah. Yeah. Fall off a cliff. Um, a piano could fall on your head. You know, you could fall into a manhole. That would hurt. But no, I, I agree. You definitely, if you're distracted doing something that needs even more attention, especially if you, I don't know, go to Walmart at like 11 o'clock at night and you're just distracted, you're walking through the parking lot and you're not paying attention to your surroundings, you can definitely see how that can get a little meh. And oh, yeah. Problem. Yeah, dude, Yesenia will be the first one to tell you that I preach that. Like, you have to be uh, aware of of what's around you, and that requires for you to not be distracted, which is being on your phone or, you know, just not even paying attention, not even being on your phone, just walking up and la 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 la, la. let me not pay attention. Well, La La Land's a great place, then. <laughs> telling the first time. Trust yeah. me, there all the yeah. time. You're there know, quite a bit, bit, bud. I know, I know. <laughs> and that is so true. You are the first person. We were literally talking on the phone as you guys were going to Walmart last week, and you literally got off the phone with me so that you guys could just walk into the Wally Mart. I was like, okay, I thought I was going along for this Walmart trip so we could keep roasting your wife the whole time, but I was like, whatever. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's not. We got our first. It, it was just because the, the the time that we went, it was super late and it was dark. Oh, so late. <laughs> yeah, but we needed to get some some things from the store. Some snacks. It was it was snacks. It was snacks, definitely. Was snacks. And so the positives have distractions. I one hundred percent think there's a big benefit to distractions. One of the things I'll say often to my close friends. I'll ask them a question when they're going through something and they don't quite know what they need in that moment. I'll ask them if they want to talk or if they want space or if they want a distraction. And people always, I feel, give distractions a bad rep. But I think distractions can be really good for the brain, for the mind, for the soul, for like when you're processing emotions. Sometimes you need to get away from that emotion and you need to take yourself from a space where you might be sad or grieving or just not in a great headspace and you need to distract yourself with something that might bring you some joy. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I agree with that uh, somewhat to an extent. I mean, just because the type of person I am, I, I usually deal with things head on so you know i i really try not to put things off or distract myself from you know things that i need to handle but it is it's a healthy practice to get away from those stresses of uh you know work or whether it's like um taking a break from the kids you know the kids can can work you up and get you all riled up but once they are down for bed or they're with the other parent, it's huge for you to have your own alone time and for you to distract yourself with whatever you, you choose to do. 
See, I 100% agree with that. And, you know, it's important to know there's a difference between distractions and running away or checking out from a problem or yeah. an emotion or a situation that you don't want to be involved in. It's okay to use a distraction to help you process your emotions or when you need to calm down from a situation that you may have been angry or triggered by, a distraction can definitely help you in those situations kind of just calm down, bring yourself into a more positive headspace to then face it head on, like you're saying. Yeah, well, I mean, on the other hand, it's also, you know, you don't you don't want to be engaged with everything all the time. You know, and so it's it's good for you to be distracted, but to an extent, just for, I'd say, a certain amount of time. You know what I mean? You just want to be able to pull yourself back into reality. I agree. We can definitely, that's one of the negative side of distractions is you can definitely let it spiral to the point where you are so distracted that you just, you lose sight of what you were doing, what is going on around you, and you take in more negative steps and you have positive steps into solving a solving a problem or processing an emotion or fixing a bad situation. But they do help, especially in those moments when you're trying to get out of, not get out of, but trying to spice up the mundane tasks of the day to day for a moment. Like if you worked a boring job at a bank where all you do is you know, the same thing 150 times a day, you need a little bit of distraction every now and then to keep your mind from falling asleep. Yeah, no, I agree. And it's just like anything else in life, man. It's just with moderation, you know, it's, it could it could be perfectly healthy. Exactly. Distractions and moderations, I think, is what it really comes down to. Don't let a distraction consume you because it can, but also don't always use a distraction as a way to process. Definitely talk, definitely take space for a moment if you need to take that space, but find ways that you can use this tool healthily. I'm going to go with healthily to help yourself mentally. Any, any last thoughts on distractions? Negative, where do you land after our conversation over these last few minutes? Where do you land? Distractions, good, bad, problem, not a problem? Um, I'm going to say good with moderation. I mean, uh, just like I said before, I mean, I'm just, I'm a proponent for facing things on, well, head on. You know what I mean? I, I really don't like to distract myself from things that I don't want to deal with. But I definitely do think it is needed when you're dealing with things all the time and, you know, this world can just be so stressful. It's it's nice to distract yourself every once in a while. And the audience agrees, of course, you made a fantastic point. So let's get let's gear up for the finale. Audience, get ready to laugh kids at home, friends who are listening, we're going to get serious, quote unquote, one more time. All right, it's time to get serious. We're going to play a little game. You laugh, you lose. Dad joke edition. We're both dads. We're both hilarious. We both should do stand up comedy. Aaron, you go ahead and go first. Try to make me laugh with a dad joke. All right, I got a good one. Why can't a nose be 12 inches long? Because then it would be a foot. Oh, oh, oh. oh nice. You knew that one. There you go. I wouldn't buy anything with Velcro. Do you know why? Why? It's a total ripoff. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, go for it. How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? Eight to ten tickles. Ten tickles. 
I was pretty close. Why do bees have sticky hair? Hmm. Why? Because they use a honeycomb. What kind of shoes do ninjas wear? Slippers. Sneakers. So dumb. <laughs> what, was that a laugh? It was not a laugh. Was that a little snicker there that I heard? Comment. If a crime happens at the Apple store, what does it make you? If you see a crime happen at the Apple store, what does it make you? I don't know. What does it make me? An eyewitness. That was a good one. All right, go. Come on. Bring it. Bring what it time out. What time did the man go to the dentist? What time did the man go to the dentist? I don't know. Tooth hurty. You're killing me, small. You're killing me. <laughs> audience for that one, apparently. Hmm. I got it. I got a pretty good one. You ready? Okay, go for it. What does a lemon say when it answers the phone? I don't know. Yellow. No, nothing. Jail. Jail. <laughs> Is. Mm, mm. What state? Has the most streets. Mm, I don't know. Rhode Island. That was a good one. Dang, come on. What concert costs just 45 cents? Nickelback. No, 50 cent. 50 cent 50 featuring cent. Nickelback. Nickelback. That was a good one. That was a good one. That's a good one. So do you know what happens every spring? No. I get so excited I wet my plants. No. Nothing. Dang it. <laughs> what do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. An impasta. That's right. Oh, we all know that one. What's the best way to watch a fly fishing tournament? I don't know. Live stream. What do you call two monkeys that share an animal account? Amazon account. Two monkeys that share an Amazon account. I don't know. Prime mate. Get it? Get it? I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Why are piggy banks so wise? Why? Because they're filled with common sense. Mm. Why is Peter Pan always flying? Because he never lands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's a robot's favorite snack? I don't know. Computer chips. Where do math teachers go on vacation? Where? Times Square. Yeah, no. I don't I don't think we're getting there. I don't think we're gonna I don't think we're getting there. I don't think we're gonna get there. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna get there. Um, how about, how about, uh, knock, knock jokes? I think we can do some knock, knock jokes. Some knock, knock jokes? Let's do it. Mm. Actually, I got, I got one last dad joke. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. What is the most popular fish in the ocean? A starfish. Is it really? 
Yeah, he's a star. I don't get it. Knock knock. Who's there? Tank. Tank who? You're welcome. Jail. <laughs> Why should you always knock on a refrigerator door before opening it? Why? In case there's a salad dressing. It's a good one. It's a good one. I told my kids to stop calling me. Why? Because I told them to call me dad. <laughs> Did you chuckle? Did you chuckle? No. No. My wife told me to take the spider out instead of killing him. So, you know, like a normal person, we went out, had a few drinks, nice guy. He's a web designer. Knock, knock. Who's there? Woo. Woo who? Glad you're excited, bud. I'm always excited. An elderly couple is in church. The wife says to the husband, I've let out one of those silent farts. What do I do? The husband says, change the battery in your hearing aid. Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock knock. You're done. Knock so, knock. Have you ever told your wife to embrace her mistake? Dude, you didn't, you didn't let me finish my joke. <laughs> have you ever told your wife to embrace her mistake? No. That's probably a smart thing. She'd probably give you a hug. Oh, dude. So would our mother. <laughs> oh, there, there you go, dude. <laughs> I lose. You there it is. There it is. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is. we hope you learned something today. We hope you possibly laughed at some of those horrendous dad jokes that neither of us thought were funny. Do only other people get enjoyment from dad jokes, you think? I think it's just a stigma, dude. They just want you to be old and unfunny. I don't know. Those, some of those are pretty funny. I had to contain it for the sake of the, for the bit. Well, I don't know. I mean, whenever I tell Lily dad jokes, it, she takes them pretty well. Yeah, same for mine. Whenever I tell Delilah dad jokes, she thinks they're so funny. Yeah. It's because for the kids, man. It's for the knows, kids. She knows they're a joke. I don't think she really understands all of them, but she laughs, so it makes me feel better. So, did you learn anything today? Uh, you know what? I learned that I need to get distracted more often, not take things so seriously. Yeah, that would be a good one. That would be a good place to start for you. I'll allow it. Let's see. For me, I learned that dad jokes really aren't that funny <laughs> when you're trying to not laugh and lose. I mean, no, on a real note, I learned that active listening is so important, and we were both horrendously awkward and not as cool as we thought we were back in the day. Probably still aren't, but that's okay. Until next time, folks, we thank you. Be here next week as we have a special guest. As long as, tech, fingers crossed, everything works out. We'll be having the host of the Single Dad Reboot podcast. We're super excited to have him on. Great friend of mine. 
awesome guy. We're really excited for him. In the meantime, make sure you go over to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the places. You can see all of our deals on Danos and several other brands in the bio or description of the show. You'll see our link tree there to where you can find all of our deals, all of our socials, and everything there. So go and hit that up. Click it because you can't click it no more. Click everything and get everything there. Whew, that's a mouthful. And Aaron, should people give five stars, leave reviews, comment, share, all that good stuff? Get it all in. Get it all in, people. We need your feedback. We need your feedback. We need your engagement on all the socials. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate your support. We appreciate all that you do for us. We would absolutely love if you shared this with a friend, a coworker, a family member, or anyone that you think needs to hear about any one of these messages on active listening, distractions, needs to hear some funny dad jokes, or just wants to not feel like they weren't, they were also a complete embarrassment during middle and high school. We all were. Share it with them. Share it with someone you love. Don't forget to check out everything we got going on at Ball Boy Media. Find us on Facebook under Ball Boy Media. Find us on Twitter with the Young Dad Pod. Find us on Instagram under Young Dad Pod. Or you can find us on Instagram under Ball Boy Media. We love your support. We love you. Thank you so much. Special thank you to our sponsors, Dano Seasoning, Everlast Boxing Company, fanatics and lastly certainly not least the coldest water thank you again so much for listening can't wait to see you next time